So one of the most central questions <laughs> I'm getting in my series dedicated to spike protein contributing to the abnormal color formation is, does the vaccinal spike protein, so spike protein produced from vaccines could be contributing to these clots, to these abnormal clots. And that's what we'll be address addressing in today's video. My name is Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Marriage Genomics. And we're going to be looking at another publication from this group of authors that I've been, we've been we've been looking at their data for the last few videos in this series, but in a really interesting context because what they specifically looked in this particular publication that they published later in in last year was the formation of these abnormal clots, but more specifically in individuals that were suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome, okay? I'm just gonna make sure I give you as much of this view as possible. Now, why chronic fatigue syndrome? Because these authors clearly observed early on that these individuals present remarkably similar set of symptoms as those with long COVID. And it is the individuals with long COVID, as we've discussed many times in previous videos, show these abnormal amyloid clots that these authors refer to as fibrinoloids. So check out past videos to, to find out what I mean about that. And they tested the same series of tests that they've done previously with the blood samples of individuals with long COVID or people with with acute COVID-19. So they looked at hypercoagulability, <laughs> hypercoagulation, I can't say that word, so I'm gonna rephrase it. And they use a technique called thromboelastography, I believe. We'll be discussing that in one of the future videos as well, and how you could potentially be measuring for, for, for this. For these, they also looked at platelet activations and finally formation of these microclots. And they showed, yes, indeed, the individuals with chronic fatigue syndromes were more predisposed to have to have increased levels of coagulation. They did show that these individuals also had a higher likelihood of having platelet activated as well. Platelets do contribute to the formation of clots as well as, as well as help generating inflammatory state. And they finally, of course, looked at for the formation of these abnormal amyloid clots using fluorescent microscopy, using a molecule that fluoresces when hit with a specific wavelength of light when the proteins are misfolded in a specific pattern. These proteins are called amyloid proteins. Check out past videos again to get a background on this. And once again, they were able to show that plasma samples of individuals suffering from chronic fatigue syndromes were more likely to produce these clots. Spontaneously, they're there. They're flowing in the blood in these individuals as compared to samples of normal healthy individuals. So normal healthy individuals had very, very little of these as, and people with chronic fatigue syndromes had more. They did quantitate that and it was at least tenfold higher. It was more like about almost 15 fold higher levels. What's really neat about this particular publication is because they actually assessed how you should start measuring for these abnormal microclots. That's really good and really important because we do need some sort of a system on how should we be looking for, for these in, in, in suspected individuals. And they showed that pattern. So they actually developed a system of grading these microclots from uh, stage one to stage four as well. And, and, uh, that, I thought that was really cool to see that. So how you can start measuring this. They also uh, develop a, a grading system for platelet activation as well. This is really great. These will be very valuable tools potentially in the future if we adopted in clinical use, which I hope we 
we do i hope more scientists and clinicians start looking at this information and start studying this information of what these researchers are have done because their work is truly phenomenal very very valuable and the take-home message is why and also they looked at the formation of these microclots in the blood as i mentioned they're spontaneously present which means they are likely to to have some degree of of blocking blood vessels just the way they suspect is happening in uh, long COVID individuals and they believe this might be a contributing factor of why these individuals are suffering from the type of symptoms that uh, that well they are suffering from they also use thrombin as well to see um, whether addition of thrombin remember thrombin is involved in formation of clots and stimulating formation of clots whether that adds to the formation of clots and once again there was a increase in formation of these abnormal amyloid clots in individuals with chronic fatigue syndromes as compared to normal healthy individuals but here is the biggest one finally the vaccines unlike the previous publications we've been discussing all this time these individuals what they also they they all the patients that they've tested whether they were healthy or those suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome they this time they tested these individuals or they segregated them whether they were vaccinated for COVID-19 or not and obviously that's the biggest question that I keep getting on on YouTube hey where this is vaccine contributing to these uh, abnormal amyloid clots and the answer here is that when when they, they looked at for uh, for the vaccination status the healthy individuals whether they were vaccinated or not they th they had no impact on the formation of these amyloid clots now what does that mean it what it the only thing we can surmise from that type of result is that vaccination has no long-term effect in for me in helping forming these clots perhaps it might when the spike protein is being produced soon after vaccination but we simply don't know that it's something we have to literally test for whether that could be true or not and we simply don't know but the good news is that at least if you do vaccinate there is no long-term effect so the spike protein the spike protein if it's no, not around these healthy individuals made no difference healthy individuals showed remarkably low levels of these amyloid clots whether they were vaccinated or not same thing with the people who had chronic fatigue syndrome whether they were vaccinated or not there was no difference uh, at all in fact if you looked at the data those who were unvaccinated seemed to show the highest level of formation of these amyloid clots in the individuals who had chronic fatigue syndrome but these authors did not separate that in terms of statistics whether there was a statistical significance in in, in that group or not so that's the big question that i wanted to let you know and we clearly need to know more uh, is the presence of spike protein while circulating in the blood a problem or not that's still yet to be determined as far as i understand not 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 that i've seen any data that would help us answer that question right now all right that's i'm gonna wrap it up here and the big question is will this video survive or not <laughs> depending on the prior wind issues and uh just wanted to let you know hey i've been invited to a couple conferences thanks to the videos that i've been publishing so i wanted to say a giant big thank you to all of you because clearly it's based on the views and sharing of these videos that clearly scientists are also watching these and it's unusual to be invited to be a speaker at a conference on account of youtube videos right it's usually on the account of of uh, doing research right but we clearly need to disseminate this information this knowledge as fast as possible and the reason why is because we need to figure out how we can help people especially those who are suffering from these symptoms and i just want to say a big thank you because if it wasn't for you sharing these videos letting other people know about about them these individuals probably would not have ever heard of me and i would have not been invited and why am i saying this because if you are interested in this topic the first conference that is coming up 
is dedicated to exactly the topic of long COVID as well as the chronic fatigue syndrome. It's free and it's open to the public. So I'm going to provide the link in the description. So please check it out. It's online and um, clearly there'll be other experts speaking at that conference. People who actually do research as well, scientists and I invite you to please go check it out. I think it's very important and, and share as well. Finally, I also have a COVID Q&A coming up. Um, so please go check it out. Once again, thank you for all your comments. We try to answer as many of these as possible. If you want to get tickets to the COVID Q&A events for free, then please subscribe to our newsletter. The link for the newsletter subscription is in the description below as well. And the last comment is, of course, we still have our Patreon account. And uh, Patreon account is for more controversial topics. Let's see if I can give you a little more view of this spectacular area in the Canadian Rockies. And that's it for today. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you on another hike. Bye everyone. Ciao for now. Stay, stay well, stay healthy, stay active, go inside. Go outside to nature as much as you possibly can and gain the same therapy that I'm gaining. Bye, everyone. <laughs>